He's tired of running in circles, yet he continues running the same terrible treadmill. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst things done by Bojack Horseman. You told a contestant you would advance her to the final round if she slept with a PA? I said seduced. There is a distinction. For this list, we're looking at some of the most disappointing and deplorable things that this anthropomorphic horse has ever done. In case you haven't caught up to the end of season 5, there's a spoiler warning in effect. Number 10. Abandoning Secretariat I only get it like five more times. I'm tired of running in circles. I'm tired of running in circles. I'm tired of running in circles. One of Bojack's biggest aspirations was to star in a movie about his childhood hero, Secretariat. After the success of his book One Trick Pony, he finally gets that opportunity, only to throw it all away in the last few episodes of season 2. When Lenny Turtletop puts Abe to Catfish at the helm of the project, Secretariat is gutted and turned into a cheesy family movie. Today we're filming what used to be the scene where Secretariat commits suicide, but is now a scene where he swims in a fishing hole with his girlfriend Susie Side. Yeesh. This causes Bojack to slip back into his depression, and he soon ditches the entire production to travel to New Mexico. But there has to be more. Well, when's the last time you were actually happy? Basically, he left hundreds of jobs dangling in the air while being willing to get sued for his abandonment. In the end, Bojack gets replaced by a CGI version of himself. Being Secretariat isn't just about running fast. Secretariat's a state of mind. It's about doing the right thing and standing up for yourself. Number 9. Trying to Sabotage Diane and Mr. Peanut Butter's Wedding Well, for what it's worth, I think it took a lot of guts to do what you did back there. Mm. When Diane pulls away from Bojack after an inappropriate kiss, Bojack realizes he's developed feelings for her. Honestly, this wasn't the least bit surprising. There are quite a few instances where Bojack tries to chase after Diane, despite knowing her relationship with Mr. Peanut Butter. However, things go too far in the episode Horse Majeure. Bojack ends up spending an entire week plotting elaborate ways to sabotage their wedding. This is perfect. Now that the wedding's at my restaurant, we have the home field advantage. Perfect for sabotage. He even ropes character actress Margot Martindale into one of his schemes. Thankfully, Todd manages to stop him outside of Elefante and calls him out for his poor behavior. Hey, man, she made her choice. Look around. This day is not about you, okay? Ooh. So maybe you should just stop trying to mess with other people's lives. Number 8. Taking up with Bradley Hitler Smith's mom. Bojack and my mom are becoming like friends, and they're acting real weird. Oof. As we've learned throughout the show, Bojack did some pretty selfish things while he was on Horse and Around. On top of being emotionally abusive towards Sarah Lynn, Bojack had a history of hooking up with parents. In the episode Still Broken, we learned that Bojack was acting a little too friendly with Bradley Hitler Smith's mom, and the child actor noticed. Oh. Brad, hang on one second. Your mom wasn't redheaded twins, right? No! Okay. This affair would eventually cause Bradley's parents to divorce, but adding insult to injury, when confronted by Bradley about it, Bojack doesn't even remember it happening. Your mom, was her name Karen? Can we drop it? Something with a K. Her name is Nora. You know, my parents got a divorce because of you. Nora. I don't know. I banged so many chicks in the 80s. Bojack should thank his lucky stars that Bradley is a more forgiving person, as the two would soon work on a horse and around spin-off, which Bojack also abandoned. I can't do this again. This isn't right. What do you mean? I need to go. We need to shoot the rest of this episode. I'm sorry. I, I just, I, I don't belong here. Where are you going? I don't know. Number 7. Sabotaging Todd's Chance at Rock Opera I don't have a job. I don't have any prospects. I probably won't ever finish the rock opera I'm working on. What? <laughs> Since when are you working on a rock opera? Todd isn't the brightest bulb, but Bojack is still way too hard on the guy. What am I supposed to do, okay? You don't give me any closet space. Not my problem. In reality, Bojack needs him, so much so that he'd seemingly prefer to see Todd fail than move on. In the episode Zoe's and Zelda's, Todd tries to launch a rock opera that Bojack says is worse than 100 September 11th. Basically, it's Tommy by way of Cirque du Soleil, set in space with heavy erotic overtones and the gripping psychodrama of a thriller with plenty of heart and more than a little humor. After some help from Bojack, Todd manages to sell the show to a theater owner. All he has to do is write up the third act. 
Worried that his only friend would get to move out should it succeed, Bojack conjures up a plan to get Todd hooked on a video game. Okay, here we go. Song time. Or should I just play one game now, just to get the creative juices flowing? We both know that if you play that game tonight, you'll never leave this couch! Todd fails to get any sleep, resulting in a terrible performance and the rock opera getting rejected. Yeah, I bought this earlier and I'd like to return it. I don't know where the receipt went. I remember you. You came in yesterday. No problem. Number 6. His speech at Beatrice's funeral. And as I'm leaving, I think, I just got a free churro because my mom died. No one ever tells you when your mom dies you get a free churro. In all fairness to Bojack, Beatrice wasn't an entirely great mother. She was pretty condescending and resentful towards Bojack when he was a kid. Still, she didn't deserve the treatment Bojack gave her while she was suffering from dementia, and the payback didn't end there. And I know that now, and it's good. It's good that I know that. So. It's good my mother's dead. In the episode Free Churro, Bojack spends an entire 20 minutes giving a eulogy at her funeral, often sidetracking with disrespectful jokes and anecdotes to show how terrible she was to him. Is when that stranger behind the counter gave me that free churro, that small act of kindness showed more compassion than my mother gave me her entire goddamn life. Just when we think things couldn't get any worse, the troubled 90s star realizes he's at the wrong funeral. Nice one, Bojack. Is this funeral parlor B? Number 5. Almost being amorous with Penny. It's one thing if a bunch of kids get drunk together on prom night, but if there's an adult there, then it's like I was supposed to be the responsible one, and then the whole thing feels kind of creepy, you know? Okay, now we're getting into the real messed up stuff. After a somewhat magical night of crashing a prom and leaving a friend passed out at the hospital, Penny tries to sleep with Bojack, claiming she knows what she wants. But you're 17. Which is the legal age of consent in the state of New Mexico. Okay, that's not- And I didn't have anything to drink tonight, so everything's totally legal. Penny, no. It's okay. I want this. At first, Bojack rejects her, but when he fails to win Charlotte's affection, he gives in and lets Penny inside his boat, despite her being only 17. Is it legal in New Mexico? Sure, but it's still messed up. Luckily, Charlotte catches the two before anything happens. In one night, Bojack pressured kids into remaining silent about a drunk minor, ruined an important friendship, and possibly scarred a young woman for life. And to think we're only halfway done with this list. You are not out of my driveway in 30 minutes. I will call the police. And if you ever try to contact me or my family again, I will f***ing kill you. Number 4. Betraying Herb Kazaz Back in the day, Herb was arrested for lewd acts, and Horse and Around's network executives start gunning for him. Police say Mr. Kazaz was caught in the middle of lewd acts with another man. Knowing his career is on the line, Herb confides in Bojack, despite the two having grown apart, and asks him to help by threatening to leave the show. Bojack agrees, but quickly changes his position when he's confronted by ABC executive Angela Diaz. Bojack, can we chat for a second? Oh, here we go. It's the big one. Sure enough, Herb is fired the following day, and Horsin' Around plans to continue without him. Basically, Bojack was willing to let a friend lose his job in order to save his. That being said, we can't blame Herb for refusing to forgive and forget. Herb, I said I'm sorry. Yeah, and I do not forgive you. Uh, not sure you get what's happening here. This could be the last time that No, you I'm not gonna give you closure. You don't get that. Number 3. The Secret Nixon Scene We can sneak into the library tonight and get the shot, gorilla style. Once Turtle Top sees it, he'll love it, and we can make the movie we both want to make. <sighs> okay, I'm in. Let's do it. All right! Even before booking it to New Mexico and traumatizing Penny, Bojack managed to screw things up and get someone fired from Secretariat. Bojack talks Kelsey Jennings into shooting a scene behind the producer's back, despite the fact that Lenny Turtletob has already rejected the idea. With the help of Todd, Mr. Peanut Butter, Princess Carolyn, and Margot Martindale, the two sneak into the Richard Nixon Presidential Library and get the shot. The next morning, Bojack arrives on set only to find out that Lenny has fired Kelsey and replaced her with Abe to Catfish. Hey, where's Kelsey? Oh yeah, funny story. Turns out you two knuckleheads snuck out last night and got that shot I told you not to get for the scene that's not in the movie anymore. Uh... Silly me, I didn't like that. 
so I fired her ass. It's a crummy rule, but the producer always calls the shots, and by pushing Kelsey to defy Lenny, Bojack was gambling with her job. You're feeling the full weight of that guilt, and the tears start to flow. Number two, going after Gina. But I still have this little rancid itch saying something isn't right. It's like there's always something lurking just beyond the horizon. Throughout season five, Bojack starts feeling persecuted by his own friends and colleagues. So when he becomes addicted to painkillers and finds out Diane knows about his trip to New Mexico, everything spirals out of control. Bojack rapidly fades in and out of reality, failing to differentiate between reality and Filbert. The spiral gets so bad that he ends up strangling Gina long after Flip yells cut. Bojack, buddy, uh, I think he's really uh, strangling her. What? Oh no, turn the camera back on. This results in a massive PR crisis when crew members record the assault and post it across social media. What's more depressing is that even Gina wants to cover it up with a lie, believing Bojack's confession would only alter her public image. People know me because of my acting and all that goes away if I'm just the girl who got choked by Bojack Horseman. Sadly, this wasn't the first drug bender to get out of control. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some dishonorable mentions. Bojack, I stand by my work. This is a really good book, and if you just give it time, you'll see. <sighs> Maybe you're right. Really? No, you're fired. Bojack, what you did today was a slap in the face of America's heroes. Will you apologize? Okay, enough about America's heroes. Can we talk about dibs? Because he didn't even really have dibs. Clearly this is a sore subject. I was wrong to bring it up. Let's just go back down, huh? The night Lorraine died. She wanted to go back, but I wanted to see how high we could go. Bro, plane, look out. You want to know how Lorraine felt? When she got sucked into that engine, we're all just tiny bugs, right? That was a mistake. Agreed. A wonderful, sexy mistake for you and a regular mistake for me. No, it was a regular mistake for me, too. Well, what are we going to tell Todd? Um, nothing, obviously. I don't want to hurt him. Yeah, neither do I. That's why we're not going to tell him. I just feel like we should tell him. That feeling is you selfishly trying to assuage your guilt. Hey, you think the baby would be okay if I threw it over the side of my deck? Probably, right? <gasps> Bojack, don't. Do it. Nah, I'm just kidding around. Here you go, Mom. Oh, no, my hands are so slippery. Oh, no, oh, 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 oh. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, The Bender. So bird, so good. <sighs> Bojack? Hey, Sarah Lynn. You want a party? Oh, thank God. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> to forget about losing his Oscar, Bojack calls up Sarah Lynn to go on an epic bender. Coincidentally, this was a day to celebrate her nine months of sobriety. Nine months of sobriety. To life and being done with it. The two spend an entire night watching horsing around and taking drugs before they take things further. What do you say we go on an epic bender? Yes! They crash Sarah Lynn's AA meeting, break into Mr. Peanut Butter's home, break Diane's wrist, vandalize Anna Spanakopita's home, cause Sarah Lynn to miss her acceptance for an Oscar, and travel to Ohio to stalk Penny. And it all ends at the planetarium where Sarah Lynn passes away next to Bojack. Too much indeed. The only thing that matters is right now. This moment. This one spectacular moment we are sharing together. Right, Sarah Lynn? Sarah Lynn? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.